welcome. Welcome to Talking Art. My name is Jane Trejere, and we're continuing our conversation with artists. Uh, today, well, today we're talking to Robin Hoffman, and I'm going to remind you now and at the end of the program that if you have some names of artists that you'd like to recommend, please send the information to talkingart at fcat.tv. And if you have questions that I'm not asking that you would very much like me to ask, please send those as well. Thank you. So without further ado, let me introduce Robin Hoffman. Hi, thank you. Thanks so much for having me today, Jane. Great. <laughs> so tell us, um, where are you from and what brought you to this area? Let's start there. Well, I was born in Michigan and I've lived a lot of different places. Um, but I came here because my husband and I and our young son wanted to move out of the big city. We lived in New York and we were done and we wanted a quieter place to raise our son. So that's why we came here. Now when you say New York, you mean New York City? Yes. I'm from New York originally too. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to realize that not everybody means New York City when they say New York. Right, yeah, yes. and I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> that really is a sign of a New Yorker. Um, so, uh, so, so how long have you been here now? Three years. Three years. Only three years. And um, can you tell us, were you always an artist? Did you do art in school? How did you become an artist? Well, I was always a kid who loved to draw. And my first teacher was my grandfather, um, who told me to look, picture what you want to draw on the page, and then just fill in the lines. You know, good, good advice, right? Um, if you can do it. Well, I tried, <laughs> but he, no, he was the first person who inspired me to, um, to try to draw realistically. So, What were you drawing then? Oh, I was drawing Nature? horses and cats and people and, you know, family members and, you know, I was a little kid. Did you keep your drawings? Uh, I don't think I ha I don't think. No? There might be some around so somewhere. Did, so did this take you to art school one day? It did one day, yeah. Yeah, but first, um, I mean, not, not right away, not... Uh, um, I was a ballet dancer. That was what I had to do, and that is what you have to do while you're young. And um, I went into ballet very seriously at eight years old, and I got my first job when I was 17. I graduated high school by correspondence, and I went on tour with the Joffrey Two Dancers, which was the second company oh, of the Joffrey Ballet. Very impressive. And um, subsequently, I joined the Milwaukee Ballet and the Louisville Ballet, and I went back and I joined the main company of the Joffrey Ballet, and I danced with the Metropolitan Opera and some other companies along the way. Oh my goodness! And Robin. I danced <laughs> professionally for about 19 years, and uh, and then <laughs> after that, I went to art school. <laughs> oh, so, but so it was, why do ba why do ballet dancers stop being ballet dancers? Again, it's kind of like being an artist. You're never not a ballet dancer once you are, but you do have to stop working because the body just, you get to a point age-wise where the body can't recover fast enough. It's a very punishing art form, um, very, very intense physically. So, yes, yeah, so I'll, you know, I retired, and, uh, but I'll always be a ballet dancer. It's, it's not something you can sort of delete from your personality. So after that you went to art school? After that I went to art school, yes. After that I, I you know, I decided I'll retrain. I didn't want to be a ballet teacher, at least not full time. And so I went to art school. And um, you know, I was thirty six. I, I had to go take the SATs. <laughs> yes. And I applied to art school and I went. And uh, I majored in illustration at School of Visual Arts in New York. And um, and I graduated in 2006, and I, you know, it's been, it's been eight years, and I would say that it's taken me every minute of those eight years to understand what I learned in art school. Mm. So, <clears throat> so what did you launch off and do? Well, um, it, you know, unsurprisingly, it was kind of precipitated by you know, being a performer and being not a performer anymore. I, um, ah. Where I lived in Brooklyn, we had uh, um, a wonderful theater down the street called the Jalopy Theater and School of Music. And uh, it, was, it was new at the time. It had only been open a couple of years. Um, but it was a theater for folk music. And it was a small place, seats about 75 to 100 people, with a proscenium stage, no curtain, but a proscenium stage. And it's really close and it's really intimate. 
And I went to sit in the audience and draw the performers, whoever was going to be on stage. And I was there, you know, with the perspective of I'm not on stage anymore. And I wonder what it's like for them to be on stage playing music, which is different from what I did, very different. I mean, in many ways, like they're not off, ever off stage there. When they're not on stage, they're in the audience next to us. And they just go up there and they pull out their instruments and they play and they sing. I would be, you know, backstage putting on makeup and, you know, warming up and doing push-ups and hyperventilating for two hours before this. But these people just, you know, seemed to me, it seemed to me so much more of a casual transition between not on stage and on stage. So I got really f fascinated. Over here we have a, 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 a book, your sketchbook. This is one of my sketchbooks from that time, yes. Can you is this what you do? You go to performances with your sketchbook? Yes, that's, that's what I did. I went to performances with my sketchbook and I began drawing what I saw. And at first... May um, I show? May I show? Mm -hmm. this, this, is a, this is one page and randomly here's another page. So you just sit in the dark and draw? Basically, yes. Um, the two colors came from uh, the two colors came from drawing in the dark. Um, first, I would use the sanguine pencil and then the the dark soft um, graphite. And it started more with um, you know I wasn't very fast at first, so I would uh, you know I would do very quick studies, and uh, and then I would. Um, you know, for instance, explain to me why the black and the and the and the red, the sanguine, mm -hmm. why those are good colors to be drawing in the dark with. Well, I could just um, I could just sort of make them out. <laughs> um, I couldn't I couldn't make a white really work, or I couldn't make you know. Later on, I figured out what colors I could make work, but uh -huh. uh, you know, usually it's it's dark, and and as you'll see, uh, there are a lot of extra lines in here. Um, but for instance, this is a study that I did of uh, um, Mamie Minch, a performer named Mamie Minch, wonderful, wonderful singer and player. And, um, and then for the first show I did at the Jalopy, um, I did a bunch of those studies. I turned them into pictures. I took a lot of my studies and I sort of combined them into illustrations like I'd been taught in school. So the one you're pointing to here is, is what is that? Tell us about that. That is, that is Mamie performing. Um, it's... It's a combination of several studies that I took of her um, to sort of describe her on stage. So the, this is now, what we're looking at now is, uh, looks to me like a watercolor, is that correct? It's colored pencil and watercolor. So this is not, so you take your drawing from your notebook mm -hmm. and then you transfer it, you copy your own work. Yes, yes. well I copied another a lot of thumbnails you know, uh -huh. a lot of thumbnails, and, the, and then I would use my drawings as reference uh -huh. um, for the finish. Uh, and I Ma usually many, did a couple of them. Sorry. Many artists photograph something and then go home to their studios right. and, and, and paint those. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to so, photograph for a number of reasons. First of all, the sound of the shutter, I felt, was um, too distracting. Mm -hmm. And we're right there close. And also, I, I wanted to capture what I saw. I didn't want, and then use my memory to fill in. I didn't want, I was, I was studying and looking and learning, and I didn't want to take any shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So I see. So this is an exercise for you as well as a choice. It was a big exercise for me. It was really me trying to learn who I was going to be now. This looks like the same woman in the middle, is that correct? No. No, sorry. No, it's someone else. Can you tell us about that one? Okay, well that's a later picture after I began... Um, this is a trio. This is a trio, and um, by and by, as I began, as I kept doing these sketches, I started to be able to draw the whole stage. I started to be, I started to you know, understand. I started to understand how people arrange themselves to play music. I began to understand more about playing music. I was studying, you know, I was learning to play the ukulele myself at the Jalopy Theater and School of Music. And, um, and I was going, you know, three nights a week and sitting and watching and drawing just over and over and over. And so I began to understand um, and to be patient to find, you know, interesting things that people do when they're playing music 
and they do them again. You just have to be patient. Right. You have to be patient for the moment to come again, and you have to choose where you're going to put things in the picture frame. And so I began to be able to make a composition on the fly. Well, you know, so this that is was a very, new thing. This, as you're describing this, I'm feeling what you're saying, and I'm realizing that's true. They have their certain positions and and, and physical behavior up on the stage, mm -hmm. and and it's not the way you might imagine composing a set of three people. This is very real. This is that the the guitarist is leaning forward, mm -hmm. and and the and the and the bass player is sort of looking off onto stage, you know, left, <laughs> in no particular direction. Mm. And the only one who seems to be looking vaguely at the audience is the, is the woman in the middle, also a guitarist. Over here, we're looking at a group of, I don't know, five or six people. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what you mean by taking, doing the whole stage. Yes, and, and choosing where to put people. Um, one of the pictures that's up here, right behind you, um, that's the M Shanghai String Band, and that was really the band that taught me how to draw bands. Um, in this picture, I think there are, what, there are six of them only, but um, they perform regularly at Jalopy once a month, and there are often 13 of them, oh. and they sort of circle around three microphones, so they are always moving, always moving, and you really have to choose where you're going to put people and wait for them to go back, you know, and, and kind of decide. And as I drew them over and over, I would, I would try to put different people in front, you know, it never and happened that you drew the same person over and over again. Well, I drew them all over and over no, again, I mean, but oh, not in the same place. Yeah. Um, a band of one <laughs> in 13 positions. Oh, no, that happened too. That happened too. I drew a lot of solo performers over and over and over again. And, um, on one picture? Oh, no, no. Oh, just, sorry, I'm, over time. Over no, time. No, I did this for three years, so uh -huh. I ended up, I just ended up drawing a lot of these folks many, many times. Well, tell me about this palette, because it's consistent. It's... Yes. If, well, what, what are these colors? I see the sanguine again. I see mm -hmm. sort of an orange. Is that the sanguine? Well, I'm a person, you know, I'm a ukulele player, and um, I like an instrument with two octaves, and I like a palette, a limited palette, uh, you know, uh -huh. six colors, including black and white, pretty much. And right. so I had my sanguine and my, uh, my dark violet blue, and um, when I'm in the theater drawing, I will use that sanguine and that dark violet blue, and then I'll add red. As and your highlight? As, um, yeah, I guess you could kind of call it a highlight. Um, I see it. I see it over here. What we have the, um, is that a ukulele and a bass? Yes. That's yes. an odd combo. Oh, not Maybe. so odd. Not so odd? I'm no. not a musician, so I shouldn't speak. You, but you, you I find think what's, what's, I find fascinating about it. first of all I see the red line as a highlight there yes and yeah. I also see that the place is the picture is sort of dominated by by the mics yes and the wires and I love it that's part of the landscape of the um, of the the stage the, the microphones the mic stands the sometimes music stands curtains stuff and sometimes that stuff is what makes the picture what pulls it all together um, it's this, you know, also from my illustration training, you can draw the eye around the picture with things like instruments, microphone stands. Well, they're all you know. pointing at this man's face. Yeah. Or That's the other man's usually face. Usually what happens. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, photographers, it's funny because I've worked alongside of photographers a lot who are documenting the show or just taking pictures as well. And I've had some really interesting conversations um, looking for, through the photographs and going, oh yeah, I saw that too, and flipping through my sketchbook, and we got the ah, same ah. expression or the same moment, you know. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. What a wonderful thing. I mean, here it's, in this gallery, that's the kind of thing I would really love to show, is it, the photograph and the drawing it's of the same moment. It's a pretty interesting conversation that, that we sometimes have, um, but the photographers often, you know, wail and moan about the mic stands and things that are in the way, and I'm like, uh, no. well, if I don't like where it is, I can just sort of draw it a little bit differently I see. <laughs> and, I see. and yes, make it work course. for myself. So, uh huh, uh huh. So that's that's the benefit to being the <laughs> the sketch artist. So I see among these uh, these pieces here, I see a poster. 
That's a different style. Would you like to talk about that? Sure. Well, that is um, that's some commercial work that I did recently, and uh, by golly, I got hired to draw a musician <laughs> after Imagine all this that. time, um, <laughs> which was was really fun. And um, this is a, a musician that I didn't really know much about before I was assigned given this assignment. So I looked at a lot of photographs, and I, I didn't have a chance to see him live, but um, I looked at a lot of videos before I could understand enough to draw the way I like to draw. But this is a different palette. It sure is, yeah. It sure Although is. Although the blue is there, and the orange sanguine is there, and the black, it's and the red. Yep, black and red always has to be there. But um, it's a different feel completely. It is. It's, yeah, a different thing. Well, this palette that I'm using here um, really developed, first of all, to be in the dark. Like the red pulls everything together, but the sanguine and the blue I could sort of see. Now, I can't always see well. Sometimes I really can't see while I'm drawing very well at all, and I, I won't know what I've got until the lights come up. But I find that if you don't give up, you, you get what you need. Um, and then later on, I would add the blacks, add uh, a gold, um, I use an umber, um, more violet usually, and it developed around not only the dark, but the Jalopy Theater specifically, which has this big red curtain upstage, and it's all red and gold decor, and um, very reflective in that way, very warm and glowy. So that's, that's how that palette developed, and I brought it with me here to Massachusetts. Uh, my favorite place to draw right now is the Parlor Room in Northampton where this picture of, um, this is their house band. Th this group here of six, five? Um, yes, there are five of them. <laughs> five. This time, yes. yeah. So, so uh, we've gone away from the poster. I wanted to ask about oh, this hmm. style. It's more, how shall I say, uh, it's more precise, like a, like a, like a comic book, mm -hmm. rather than a sketchy kind of feeling. Yes. And, and, and is that a decision you made, or is that something you were asked to do? That's partly what, something I was asked to do. I ne it needed to be very bold. It needed to be very recognizable from far away yes. for the poster. Yes. Um, so I decided to go with more of a, um, this more is of a cartoony feel also. I didn't, didn't want to get too concerned with small details because they wouldn't be seen far away. That's right. So I thought, you know, what's what's the most recognizable thing about this artist? Well, you know, he's his shock of red hair, and he wears always wears glasses, and Got you it. know, this res reminds me a little bit of the work that you do on the covers of your husband's books. Yes, that's more of a, a graphic style too. Do you want to say something about? I um, well, I illustrate my husband's books. He's got a, a series for middle grade readers called uh, The Adventures of Shirley Link. She's a teenage detective. And his name is? His name is Ben Zackheim, and he's written some other books um, that, uh, for instance, The Camelot Kids, which he's working really hard on finishing up right now. I, did you illustrate all of them? No, I did, I'm not the illustrator on, for all of them, but I am for Shirley Link. And okay. um, Shirley Link is ongoing. Um, Number five is in the works. Several short stories are out now. Wonderful. And uh, Shirley is just kind of a, it was a good fit between he and I. Uh-huh. Everything. Uh, it, it's this kind of, it's, it's this kind of look, the, the yes. drawings, right? Yeah. So um, where have you shown? Have you shown your work? I have shown my work uh, three times at the Jalopy Theater. I have shown my work since I've been in town. Let me hope I'm not forgetting anything in New York. I don't know that I am. Um, since I've been here, I have shown quite a few times in the window of Downtown Sounds, the music store uh -huh. in Northampton, which is just, there's no better place for me to show my work, right? you know, this kind of work anyway, the, the live music stuff. And I've shown right here at the Arts Bank, and I've also shown at the Greenfield Savings Bank um, across the street here in South Deerfield. And Right now, my work is up uh, in the Conway branch of Greenfield Savings Bank, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, some other some other shows. Um, do you hang your work in your home? I do. Can yeah. you tell me what you chose as the wall coloring to highlight your work? 
Well, I walked into the home that I would buy, and it was already painted in colors that fit in with my palette. So Don't tell me you bought the house for that reason. <laughs> Not only for that reason, but that okay. was, was kind of another piece of the puzzle that fit together. Like, well, it's even painted right, you know. So are the funny. walls white? No, the walls are orange and green. And, uh -huh. um, Very interesting. Yeah, kind of a sanguine orange. And, you know, when you hang art in a, in a gallery, sometimes you say, ah, this needs not a white wall, but a mm. different color wall. Like right here, it, you know, it's a little bit lost on this white wall. Right. Especially right. without a frame, I guess. Especially without a frame, right. Yeah. No, but in my house, my art looks great. Well, this one here actually is another great example of where the mics take over mm -hmm. and, and sort of structure the yeah. picture. Yeah. They give it some bones. Yeah, they, they pull, your, pull your eye around the picture, I think, and the, um, it, um, it speaks to me of the relationship between these two musicians as they were singing and playing. Um, the relationship of the music, this is a fiddle and banjo duet, and so both, both of them are, are playing the melody at certain times, and they're playing, you know, they're playing against each other and, and together at the same time. Let's, let's talk about what you're working on now. All righty. You brought two small examples? Yes. Okay. Yep. So right now I am working on these, um, these pictures of creatures who are not people exactly playing music. These are snow folk. And um, these two are playing. He's playing a ukulele and she's playing the bass. And this is, oh, just like this is inspired by this picture over here, which is is recent um, of this couple playing bass and ukulele and for me her little half smile kind of makes the picture um, the picture turns around her little half smile so uh, but there are no mics in this picture nope nope, nope but no you mics. know um, you, you took instruments the mics out. especially instruments like ukuleles really rhyme visually very nicely with snowmen so, oh, right. Yeah. The shape, right. Yeah. So, um, I hadn't thought of that. Right. Of this, idea, this idea began when I was, um, I was asked to do a picture. And it was for a holiday card, and um, I was asked to do a ukulele sticking out of the snow. And so I, I you know, studied. I did 100 thumbnails, like I tried to do 100 thumbnail sketches, and, and I realized, okay, I need shapes to rhyme with the ukulele, and I drew trees, and I drew, and finally I drew a snowman in the distance behind the ukulele, and then I ended up drawing the snowman in the foreground reaching for the ukulele, and that's the picture that was chosen. So where will you be showing next? Uh, right here at the Deerfield Arts Bank. Oh, yes, at the Small yes. Arts for Big Holidays. Yes, there, and also, like I said, my work is up in the Conway branch of the Greenfield yeah. Savings Bank You as also well. teach ukulele. Right here at the Deer, Deerfield Arts Bank. Yes, I do. Well, yeah, right. I, have, uh, I have a lot of private students, and we'll be starting classes, and I, I love teaching ukulele. Um, and I don't, maybe it's the evolution of how I got into drawing music, playing and performance, my performance background and the idea of not being on stage and then I was drawing in public which is almost like a performance already and I began to play music more and more and more and so playing music is a huge part of my life now. Thank you. Thank you Robin. Thank you Jane. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping to introduce us all to all the artists in the area again we're at the Deerfield Arts Bank in the center of South Deerfield. My name is Jane Treger, and this show is called Talking Art. I remind you, you can contact me for suggestions or better questions or even deeper questions that you have to ask to artists at talkingart at fcat.tv. Thank you.